the golden moment is is that moment you have where you can go left or you can go right where you make a decision that could change your life forever While I lived in um, Tottenham, so I have one brother, uh, one sister, my mum and my dad who uh, has uh, passed away. Misbehaving was pretty easy for me at school. And I wasn't really thinking about the future. No one will, you know, get offended for me saying it. We weren't, no one here was, you know, rich or really comfortable, you know. Going up there and seeing people with stuff, sometimes you want to take it because you've you, you got a chip on your shoulder and a bit of jealousy. Being the eldest out of all of us, he was always the most eccentric, you know, always talking and loud and stuff. A disruptive, rude gang member, intimidating. I mean, most of us were here a lot because we were suspended a lot. I remember we was playing here. Oh, uh, let's go to the shop. These lot went to the shop. It's boy, so we start getting to a little scuffle. I grabbed one of my friends and I swung him round and he smashed into the shop. The glass smashes. Woo woo, alarm goes off. We kind of poked our head in the shop, so we walk in and as we turn round, there's police vans everywhere and we're on our knees and we're being arrested and being taken off to a police station to be interviewed for attempted robbery. That was a scary time. I was just thinking you can go from just doing what you'd love to do, like playing football, to potentially getting locked away. That was very, I haven't been so scared in my life. I haven't been so scared in my life. Actually, my mum sat me down and had a very emotional talk with me and she just said, you need to make a decision. Because at the point, my role models were, you know, they're no longer here, you know what I mean? Because prison or death, you know what I mean? And these are the boys that I look up to and my mum mentioned them by name. Things not here, things in jail, this is not what you, you want to do. So that was being, you know, in trouble with the police the second time was a real moment for me. A real, real moment for me. I first heard about Chicken Shed through my uh, drama teacher. She uh, brought me to watch um, Globalize and seeing that with uh, young people on stage and you know, some people who even looked like me. So thinking, I'll, you know, one day I could be possibly be able to do that. It was absolutely like mind blowing for me. It got me so excited about theatre and I, I fell in love with Chicken Shed at that moment straight away. Being young and sometimes being around here, you do get stereotyped and people, you almost become, you know, isolated from society. And go, go into Chicken Shed and people asking me, you know, my opinion. And so I remember, you know, affecting a class once with an idea I had and I didn't even want to say it. And I said it and then the whole class changed. So they was like, okay, that's great, let's run with that. You know, I was well chuffed. I remember coming back and telling everyone because we do it so naturally at Chicken Shed, that's what we do. There's never a wrong answer. It means so much to, you know, a 16 year old boy from top no more 16 year old boy from Enfield or you know any young person who feel you know that they're not being listened to. So what really changed was as I, as I came back here and some of the stuff that my friends were getting up to started not sitting right with me anymore because then you feel like if I do get in trouble with the police and I'm away for a bit uh, people will miss me. So I started to be valued and that meant the world to me. If I think I had, you know, that willingness to change and be better always, I think Chicken Shed was just a, a vehicle that, you know, that helped me express those feelings in a way, you know, through something I love. Seeing him change made me think, do you know what, I can change as well. So it had a, had a positive effect on me because I thought, okay, if he can do it, I'm almost literally cut from the same cloth. Why can't I? I'm a member of the artistic staff at Chicken Shed, but I, I mainly work in the outreach department. So we go into uh, secondary schools, primary schools, youth offenders institutions and, and prisons. And you know, when we go to these places, we do a show called um, Crime of the Century and it, it tackles you know, gang culture and, and knife crime.
we were looking at this phrase at the moment called the golden moment. So within that, we go to these prisons and we ask them about how can a prisoner that's doing, you know, 20 odd years help a primary school kid who's just getting into gangs. So this is a, you know, it's a fantastic opportunity because these people know what the golden moment is. So they think, oh no, this is it. This is the moment we're talking about because those guys from Chigish had spoke about this moment. You know what I mean? This can change my life forever. We saw that story, how that ended. Sometimes you're sitting in a cell, in a prison cell and you're like, that was the moment. We need to, people need to start thinking a bit before it's too late.